All right. So after you create your forecast types, the next thing you want to do is set up your adjustments. So this is quite straightforward. There's two options here, manager adjustments and owner adjustments. Now, what is an adjustment? It's essentially giving the user permission to go ahead and put in their forecast amounts. Okay. So when you go in and you're putting in your forecasts, you want to be able to adjust these forecasts as you go along, right? So that they're as accurate as possible. So you have your manager adjustments, which would be letting the managers in your hierarchy uh, be able to go in and be able to adjust your forecast or for the forecast for their team uh, within uh, Salesforce. So basically right here, you'll notice you have this little pencil icon beside the amounts here. So if I go and I click this pencil icon, you'll be able to see that I can put in a forecast amount, right? So right now it's, it's $10,000, but maybe for my team, for this particular period, I want to say that their commit forecast should be $20,000, not $10,000. And I hit save. And there you have it. Now you've made an adjustment on the forecast. So this is basically allowing you to adjust your initial forecast amounts that you've placed to reflect more accurately what the, the actual uh, pipeline is going to look like by that period of time. So that's essentially your forecast amounts. I would say traditionally what companies do is they only allow the managers to put in adjustments, not the opportunity owners. So the owner of the opportunity traditionally should not be playing with their forecasted amounts. It really should be uh, their managers. So you would have this unchecked and you'd only keep the manager adjustments checked, but to each their own. Um, okay. So the next piece that I wanted to talk about was forecast rollups. So this one is a pretty confusing topic in terms of the difference between single and cumulative. So I'm going to do my best to try to explain it to you with an example. So <clears throat> single category rollups. So what is a category rollup? So with each stage that you have in your opportunity, you have an associated what they call forecast category. So you may have a category of pipeline, which basically means you want to have all, uh, you want to be able to see all of your opportunities that are not um, closed one or closed lost in your pipeline. So therefore you would go to all your stages that are not closed one and closed lost, and you would associate them now to the forecast category of pipeline. Now that is a simple example, okay? So that when you go now into your forecast, all right, you're gonna notice at the top, you're gonna see open pipeline, and right away, the sales user should understand, oh, so these are all my opportunities that haven't closed one or closed lost yet, okay? Now you'll notice there's other forecast types, uh, sorry, not forecast types, forecast categories. So Salesforce gives you these out of the box. So they have best case, best case commit and close one only. You'll notice close lost is not there. Close loss is given the forecast category of omitted. Um, close loss is not something that you would forecast again. So it would not be here. Um, closed one only would be, uh, you would want to forecast around, you know, how many of your opportunities will be closed one. Um, and then you have commit and best case. Now, essentially commit and best case, if I were to go back to what their example is of what they use commit and best case for, it basically shows, uh, you know, an addition best case would be your closed one opportunities as well as your commit opportunity. So that could be something that's further down the pipeline that's closer to closing. Uh, and then as well as your best case opportunities. So um, your commit, it's really up to you what you wanna call it. They just give you this, these definitions out of the box. I can go ahead and I can change these if I wanted to. Now this is with the cumulative category types. But going back to single, I can also change the names of my category rollups, just the single categories. So the way you would do that is you would actually go into your object manager. You go to your opportunity object. You open up opportunity. You go to fields and relations, relationships. 
you go to your stage, okay? And right here, you'll notice all your stages are here, okay? And, uh, oh, I don't know if it's actually here. Give me a second. No, so this is just, this is just assigning your stage to your forecast category that you see right here. So you would go to your stages to, to put, you know, those pipeline stages to the forecast category pipeline that you've created, right? But to actually go in and adjust your forecast categories, the names of them, let me go back actually. I apologize. I think I missed the step there. Let me go back. I think they actually have it for you here. So, um, yes, to update column labels for single category rollups, use object manager, forecast category, category field. Oh, so I was almost there. I was just on the wrong field. So forecast category field, this is where you would modify your forecast category values. So if commit in best case, uh, is not, and maybe even pipeline, even though I feel like pipeline is pretty straightforward, but for best case and commit, if they're not straightforward enough for you or enough for you, or it doesn't make sense for you, for your business, your sales users would be confused and, and would be like, Hmm, I don't understand what best case means. Then you would go ahead and you would change this. So you'll see that they'll allow you to go ahead and change it. So I can actually change this to, let's say awarded. Okay. Let's just imagine that we decided to change it to awarded. Okay. And now what I've done was, is I've changed my forecast category value on the front end to awarded. You'll notice in the back end, it still retains the, the values of best case pipeline, commit, close, and omitted. You cannot change this. This is something that Salesforce locks down in the back end. Uh, you cannot actually change the status category, but the label of that status category, that's something more meaningful to your business you can change. So that's what I just showed you here. Okay. So <clears throat> basically going back, let me go back to our stages now. Okay. Go back to our stages. So, wow, there's a lot of pickless values here. I'm not going to go through each one of these. I just want to give you a couple examples. You'll see right away the forecast category column here. And I'm going to focus on pipeline since that's the one that I think is the most um, straightforward and that a lot of people can understand. So you'll notice that a lot of them are associated already to the pipeline. So what the single category um, option does, if I go back and let me just duplicate this. So let me go back home and let me go to forecast. Okay. Click edit here and go single. So what the single category rollup does is if I go back to the other, it says show one forecast category per column. So going to here, they're talking about just having your forecast category that you've defined show up up top here in the column headers with the amounts for each category forecast category underneath it. Okay. Now, if I go back to my stages, that means all of my opportunities that have stages that are mapped or associated with the forecast category of pipeline will show up in that pipeline category header in your forecast page. So you'll be able to see and track at a high level, all of your open opportunities, not based on stage, but on forecast category, because we want to be able to group the open opportunities and the various stages that are contained within to a category and be able to forecast against that group of open opportunities. That's what this does. It allows you to go ahead and group it based off of the pipeline. Okay. Now <clears throat> let's continue now into cumulative rollup. Okay. So this one's a little bit more confusing to be quite honest. It was a little hard for me to understand at first, but the more I talk about it, the more I get it. So if we go back to forecast settings, and we toggle to cumulative category rollups. It says show multiple related forecast categories per column. So now it's not just a one-to-one. -one. Now what you're doing is, is when, when I said with our previous example, we would see the pipeline in the header and we would see all of those opportunities that had a stage that was mapped to that forecast category of pipeline in one column. 
cumulative, what it does differently now is it takes all of your open opportunities that are spread across multiple forecast categories. So now the net has just been casted even wider across of your open opportunities, right? So you're not only looking at your open opportunities with stages that are associated to just your pipeline forecast category. Maybe we want to also include in one column the awarded uh, status categories, open opportunities. So all of the open opportunities that have stages that are associated with the awarded forecast category as well. So going back to our stages, you'll see we have awarded here. We have proposal and review stage. Um, that's the only one that I see here. That's fine. Okay. So not only, so the difference is a single category, you would only be able to forecast an amount against pipeline versus if we created now a cumulative forecast category roll up, we could rename it to encapsulate or to capture both the awarded opportunities and the pipeline opportunities. And for simplicity's sake, let's just call it pipeline and awarded. Okay. That would be the forecast category roll up. So if I were to go back to my forecast categories, we would say, we would rename this to, let's just say, um, here, instead of open pipeline, we would say pipeline plus awarded. Okay. So right away, that would be the forecast category. Okay. Now you'll see here, they tell you the forecast categories of open pipeline, which is commit awarded and pipeline opportunities. Now, if we go back to our forecast categories, that means that they are including those commit opportunities as well. Can you change this? No, doesn't seem like you can. This is something that they bring in in the back end and it's, it's going to be like that. It's you're not going to be able to. So my example needs to be adjusted now to say pipeline awarded plus commit right now. I'm not going to say commit here. Maybe we call it something else. Maybe we say interested again. This is just an example. The reason why I'm steering away from commit is to show you that you can rename your forecast categories to what makes more sense to your business. But what it says here is, is that it's going to bring in all of those stages that you have to opportunities that are associated to not only just one category, but to uh, one single category, but to multiple categories, uh, forecast categories in one uh, overarching category, for lack of a better word, right? So... <clears throat> This is essentially to help you cast a wider net and to, to, to go up a level at a higher view and look at all of your open opportunities uh, across your pipeline at a higher level and be able to forecast against it. Um, I would say not everyone wants to see, uh, let's say they defined that their pipeline was everything up to awarded and then after, and then the awarded stage would be a different forecast category. Right. And that's how they defined it for their single category rollups. Right. But then let's say that they actually wanted to, def to forecast against all of those pipeline opportunities plus the awarded um, pipeline uh, awarded um, opportunities as well. They wanted to see that all together uh, and forecast against that as one. Well, you couldn't do that with a single category rollup. You would then have to go into a cumulative category rollup to now bring in that additional forecast category that you set up for awarded and put it together with your pipeline forecast category and call it pipeline and awarded, let's say. I know that this is, I'm just saying this just to, as a simple example, I know that it, it wouldn't actually work this way because you also have your commit as well included in there, but there's, Basically, I'm just explaining this example to you just to solidify the understanding of how a cumulative category roll up.